Thank you, Mr. Chairman. By my count, this is the fourth hearing that Democrats have held this year to try to push their radical agenda to weaponize voting laws for partisan advantage. The first hearing was in the Rules Committee on S-1, what many are calling the Corrupt Politicians Act. That bill was the most brazen power grab we've seen in at least a generation. And it was designed so that Democrats would never lose an election for the next 100 years. A month later, the Judiciary Committee held a hearing entitled, quote, Jim Crow 2021. That hearing was designed to impugn Georgia's common sense election bill. But much to Democrats' dismay, it did the exact opposite. By the end of the hearing, Chairman Durbin was forced to admit that the hearing title was simply meant to be, quote, provocative. Why? Well, because the testimony showed that calling Georgia voter integrity efforts Jim Crow was offensive and had no connect connection to reality. Ironically, there is a connection to Jim Crow that is playing out in this Congress. The original Jim Crow laws were laws that were written by Democrats designed to prevent the voters from voting Democrats out of office. And they worked brutally effectively. Now, in today's Democratic Congress, we again see Democrats wanting to change the rules so that the voters cannot vote Democrats out of office. There's a consistency to it, but it's not the consistency that fits the political narrative from the Democratic Party. Just recently, in July, this subcommittee held yet another hearing where Democrats argued for Congress to overturn two Supreme Court decisions, Shelby County versus Holder and Brnovich versus Democratic National Committee. But the facts and the testimony at the hearing demonstrated that both decisions were indisputably correct. These hearings are having an effect on the national conversation but not the one that the Democrats want. The more that Democrats talk about their voting bills, the less popular they become because people see them for what they are, naked partisan power grabs. This hearing is ostensibly on practiced-based preclearance, and I expect that it will be no different. When it comes to election law, Democrats have failed to get their way in state houses across the country. State legislatures elected by the people have not been nearly as willing as Washington Democrats to try to rig the system so the voters can only elect Democrats. So now the solution from our Democratic colleagues is to circumvent the Democratic process altogether. These pesky voters have a way of getting in the way of ensuring Democratic power and instead to give unelected, far-left bureaucrats total veto power over democracy, the power to stop popular voting laws dead in their tracks that is mildly given the Orwellian name practice-based preclearance. Here's how it would work. Every state and local government across the country would have to submit on bended knee to Kristen Clark and Vanita Gupta, two of the most radical left-wing Democratic activists to ever walk the halls of the Department of Justice, also advocates for abolishing the police. You want to understand where they fall in the mainstream? Even our Democratic colleagues claim they don't support abolishing the police. Well. The overlords that they would give veto power over every election law in America have both publicly, repeatedly in writing advocated for abolishing the police. And those overlords, those partisan activists, would be given the power to set aside laws adopted by legislatures, elected by the people. Remember this. It's essential in democratic rhetoric that they claim to support democracy. Just pause and understand the proposal they're putting forward undermines democracy. Democracy is the people electing, the people choosing. This bill says, nope, you pesky citizens who have a bad habit of voting for laws that make it harder 
for Democrats to stay in power forever, we're going to take away the power from the people. That's what this bill is about. These partisan activists at the Department of Justice and their DOJ staffs, the vast majority of whom for a long time have been just as radical, just as partisan as they are, as one of the witnesses today I expect will testify, they would have the ability to object to these laws, to prevent them from going into effect. When they object, the state or local government couldn't implement the law unless and until they spend a tremendous amount of time and money fighting that objection in court. This is an unbelievable amount of power going into the hands of a handful of unelected bureaucrats. And you know, the Democrats might not be pushing that if not for the fact that they know those bureaucrats will be Democrats using that power to elect other Democrats. That means if this bill doesn't pass, those unelected bureaucrats wouldn't be able to veto voter ID laws. Voter ID laws are immensely popular. 70 to 80% of Americans support voter ID laws. A majority of Democrats in America support voter ID laws. A majority of African Americans in, 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 in this country support voter ID laws. You know who doesn't support voter ID laws? Every Democrat on this side of the aisle. And they want to empower unelected bureaucrats at the Department of Justice to say, if you require a voter ID, that law is illegal and invalid. Likewise, laws enhancing the security of absentee ballots. This bill would give an unelected bureaucrat the ability to say, nope, states, you have no power to ensure that an absentee ballot is secure. No power to ensure that an absentee ballot is safe. Why? Because Democrats do better in absentee ballots. And when their efforts to protect the security of absentee ballots, it means that fraud is harder. And I have to say it is a strange place we find ourselves that one of the two major parties in America has decided that voter fraud is an outcome they are affirmatively in favor of. This is all about giving unelected bureaucrats the ability to stop any and all reasonable voter integrity laws. One final example. H.R. 4, the bill that this hearing is discussing, would require a state to pre-clear any law changing the way it maintains its voter rolls. Now, the Carter-Baker report, who are, who are Carter and Baker? That would be Jimmy Carter, former Democratic president of the United States, and James Baker, former Republican secretary of state. They did a, led a comprehensive commission on voter fraud. Today's Democrats insist voter fraud doesn't exist. Carter Baker conclu Commission concluded voter fraud was a serious problem and had a whole series of recommendations. And one of the amazing things, if you go through the Carter Baker Commission, look at their recommendations for how do we enhance the integrity of elections, what today's Democrats have done is just flipped everyone on its head. Okay, if our objective as Democrats is to detract from the integrity of elections, let's do the opposite of what Democratic President Jimmy Carter suggested. So the Carter-Baker Commission, for example, made clear that fraud, quote, arises from inactive or ineligible voters left on voter registration lists, and further that, quote, the process of up upda updating the list should be continuous. Our friends in the Democratic aisle said, well, gosh, we certainly don't want lists with dead people. That would really undermine the integrity of elections. Then you would expect them to say, that seems like a good idea from former Democratic President Jimmy Carter. But no, no, they say, if you want to update the list in any regard, if you want to remove dead people so people can't vote in the names of people who have gone to the, the life hereafter, well, you got to get Kristen Clark and Vanita Gupta to sign off. This is all about political power. And it is about political power at the expense of the people and at the expense of democracy. It is cynical and it's wrong.